the kind of customers that I've uh, been speaking with, uh, I think that there's a, um, there's a readiness assessment that you should be doing to actually start dipping your toes into uh, into AI. Uh, and I think that uh, you know having a, a solid data strategy that's probably oh, yeah. the first uh, the first bet I uh, I would say. So um, some, sometimes I have a conversation in which like uh, you know C suite is looking for. Uh, use cases where they can apply uh, Gen AI or AI as a uh, as a as a general tool, but uh, but then the the work that we tend to do is actually making sure that their data is um, you yes. know operable by uh, by AI, and that's a big um, a big step. And that's um, yeah, that's the long term asset. You know, yeah. I, I keep saying models are expandable. You know, don't fall in love with models. Um, nobody would. Uh, Nobody would uh, still be using models from you know six or nine months ago for, for LLMs. You know, I keep reminding everybody Llama two, which is which was arguably the first great amazing um, open source LLM, came out in July 2023. That's not even a year ago. And yet, oh, yeah. you know, the gap between Llama two and the best ones today, and Llama three came out about two months ago, and even Llama three isn't the best anymore. So the pe the pace of innovation there is insane. So if you if you focus too hard on models, if you fall in love with the models, um, you'll be stuck with models that really underperform state of the art. And uh, models are just again they're just a tool. You use the right model right now, and and next month you'll use another one, and next month another one, and you know you'll upgrade probably existing solutions even. But the data. You know, the data lives forever. I mean, if you're in healthcare and you have data sets from 30 years ago, they, they are absolute gold because yeah. very few folks would have that. If you live in, I don't know, if you have chemical engineering data sets, you know, from 30 years ago, they are gold. If you have financial data, if you have company data, if whatever it is, you know, um, it's, it's great. And, and the more you have and the more of a competitive advantage, uh, you'll have and in 30 years they will still be good that's the thing so it's like an investment you know it, it will pay dividends forever models like i said you know in six months it, they feel like you know a century old already so absolutely and you know it's all about the data so we need more data engineers we need more data analysts and i'm sorry to say we probably need fewer data scientists so uh, okay. if you're looking for a career into into AI, um, best job right now, in my opinion, is uh, turn company knowledge, whatever that looks like, could be in people's heads, could be PDF files, turning that stuff into data sets that can be used for model evaluation, model fine tuning. This is the only way you will create a competitive advantage for your organization, mm. not with mm. models. If you invest, you know, all things being equal, if you invest one hour of your time and or one dollar in improving your data sets, the, the return on investment here will be much, much, much higher than if you invest one hour of your time and one dollar into chasing the latest and greatest model out there. So Sounds great. just yeah. don't overthink model selection. Uh, people try too hard, right? So I mean, I could, I could, I could say just take Llama three eight billion and be done with it. You know, that's as much model evaluation as you should do, and then work very hard at plugging great quality, hopefully unique data in mm. in there. Uh, and and because at the end of the day, again for LLM applications, the content that you need to answer user questions comes from your organization. It doesn't come from the knowledge uh, that the model was trained on, right? If you're building, a, a, let's say, a banking chatbot or a, t um, a telco chatbot, and, you know, Nico asked the chatbot, hey, I lost my I, I lost my phone, uh, you know, I lost my phone, uh, my, my phone number was blah, blah, blah. No, the other one you lost. <laughs> the one that was under the table. <laughs> the one that was under the table you lost, okay. Um, I lost my phone, you know, my phone number is blah, 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 blah. Um, what should I do? Uh, please send me a replacement phone as quickly as possible. 
obviously any LLM would understand would understand what a cell phone is and what a subscription is and what a SIM card is and what you know blah 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 an address is. Can we answer the question? Of course not, because you need to know, you know, where Nico lives, where to send the phone and the and the SIM, uh, what kind of plan he has, uh, and and what the particular procedure is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So for a lot of applications, the the model is just what I call a writing assistant. Yeah, it's just here to to understand your question, um, and, and answer it in a, in a, with the right tone of voice and the right facts coming from an external source of knowledge, right? Retrieve log monitor generation and all those good techniques. So again, that is where you will need great data. So again, the ability to turn company knowledge, company policies, company data, customer data into data sets or data stores that can be used for AI applications is the critical skill. Right. Absolutely. And every great quality model out there, go look at the Hogging Face LLM leaderboard. Start at seven billion and below. Any one of them can do this equally well. Right. And yes, people will yeah, will say, oh no, but this is tiny bit better than that. I'm like, seriously, um, stop thinking too hard about that. Work on the data, work on the user experience work on the UI, work on cost performance optimization, that's where you make a difference. Not because this model is 0.1% um, or whatever higher than, than this other model on that particular benchmark. That's, that's just a waste of time.